Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch, and you are listening to my 10-minute daily podcast, Reality Reflections. I bought into what this world said would make me happy. Money, prestige, power, and hey, if it feels good, do it, because life is stressful, so party hard. Do whatever makes you happy. But that didn't quite work out, because I felt even more insecure, full of fear, shame and anxiety, and never, ever good enough. Then God found me and flipped my reality upside down and transformed my life. And I want this for everyone. So I left my executive career to help others find true acceptance, supernatural peace, joy, and love that only comes from a relationship with God. Here is my reality reflection for today. If you want to do a podcast, you can. All you need is your phone and Spotify for podcasters. It is so simple. Anyone who listens to me knows that I am technically challenged. So all you need to do is just download the app It's free and get your voice on out there. People need to hear what you want to bring to the world. Spotify for podcasters. Check it out. Hello, everyone. How are you doing on this Wednesday? Geez, I had to think, what day is it? A little bit crazy. My brother and my husband went golfing yesterday and then they came home and they spent the night and then all morning long we're here and back out on the course they go. So it's a little late for me to be doing this podcast and boy, the readings are fantastic. I cannot dive in quick enough, but I just need to tell you I'm still suffering from my dizzy things. I'm not exactly sure what's going on. It's all Like when I put my head straight back or when I lift my head up and down, when I get up from a seated position and I stand, it's not the left and right thing. But I know it's crystals because when I lay flat on my back, my eyes go dee, 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 like left and left, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. And I get kind of like dizzy and everything. And that is part of the Epley maneuver. And so I know something's out of whack. I'm not concerned about it. I don't want you to be be concerned about it. Just... You know what I'd love for you to do? If you could just pray for God to show me the answer. Like, what do I need to do here? Because I know it's not something sickening or sick-ishness, illness, virus, bacterial-ish. I don't think it's anything like that. Okay, so let's dive into the readings. Colossians 3, 1 through 11. Brothers and sisters, if you were raised with Christ, seek what is above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. Put to death, then, the parts of you that are earthly, immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and the greed that is idolatry. Because of the wrath of God is coming upon the disobedient. Whoops, because of these, the wrath of God is coming upon the disobedient. By these, you too once conducted yourselves when you lived in that way. But now you must put them all away. Anger, fury, malice, slander, and obscene language out of your mouths. Stop lying to one another, since you have taken off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed for knowledge in the image of its creator. Here, there is not Greek and Jew, circumcision and uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, (laughs) sorry, that is such a hard word, Scythian, (laughs) slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. Boy, I almost made it all the way through. I had a couple of flubs on that. 
All right, before we jump into the next one, let's just look at this. We are different because we are raised with Christ. Christ is seated at the right hand of God. So we need to, again, keep dying to ourselves. We need to continue to appear with Christ in glory, meaning glorifying him in our life by what we do, by what we say, and by what we think. It all starts with the thought. I'm in the middle of my consecration to Jesus through Mary, and St. Louis de Montfort has me reading some of this imitation of Christ. I'm going to come and read little bits and pieces of that along the way because they're just, it's just filled, 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 filled with tiny little nuggets. And they're little chapters, they call them. But on my Audible, it's like four minutes of boom. Here's something on sin. Boom. Here's something on denying yourself from whatever. Boom. Here's something about Mary. Boom. I mean, they're great little smack you in the face kind of nuggets. And one of them is all about sinning and putting to death our earthly desires and being what we are called to be, which are children of God, called to a higher level, a higher esteem, a higher calling, because eventually we are going to be in heaven. Hopefully, if we answer that call, Put away immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and the greed that is idolatry. Idolatry creeps into every aspect of our lives. Think about it. Video games, streaming services, scrolling through social media for hours upon hours. Being a workaholic, bringing your work home with you, checking your emails and texting others, not being present when people are around you, just going through life on, you know, the autopilot that I talk about all the time, that 95% subconscious programming autopilot and not looking for God, not truly seeking him in everything everything that we consume with our eyes, consume with our ears, and looking at food in a way that is nourishment for our bodies, what is good for our brains and our physical muscles and our organs. Seeking out God in nature and just in our bodies and our thoughts and our minds. Because if we start our day with God, and if we give him our day, we're going to look at that day differently than we will if we don't start our day with God and we just jump right into our to-do list or our auto program. There's a big difference. We're going to have a lot more impatience. We're going to not seek God. We're not going to be thanking God. I just want us to remember that when we are acting Christ-like, when we are called and answering that call to be raised away from the earthly stuff that's supposed to be distracting us from God, and of course the immoral stuff like pornography and adultery and lust, and you could even look at, you know, watching TV and doing things, even sports, that take you away from your calling and your state of life. So what is your state of life? Is your state of life a spouse? Are you single? Are you a religious person? And accordingly, you should be acting in that way. And there are things that we have that take us away, earthly distractions, <laughs> that take us away from being the best person that we can be wherever we are and whatever our calling is and whatever our state of life is. But we are all called 
to raise ourselves to imitate Christ to those around us and in the way in which we live our life. So, idolatry, all those things that we put in front of our serving others and loving others, including God, that should be the first step every single day so that we can truly give him our life and ask him in to help us renew our selves, right? That's what it says. Since you have taken off the old self with his practices and put on the new self, which is being renewed for knowledge in the image of its creator. So we cannot forget God first, God first, and stop the idolatry. Force yourself to sit I mentioned 30 minutes yesterday. Did you all just kind of freak out about that? Like 30 minutes, what? Man, when my husband would work, and I got to get back to this. When my husband would go to work, I would love it because it would still be dark. I would shut off all the lights. I would light the candle. I'd be all by myself. And boom, I would start my mental prayer. I would prepare myself. I'd bring all my sacramentals together and I would just dive in big, big in prayer for an hour and a half. And then I would go to daily mass. That is a prayer morning. That puts you in a totally different frame of mind and how you approach everyone in your life. Okay, because of these... These meaning immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and the greed that is idolatry. The wrath of God is coming upon the disobedient. By these you too once conducted yourselves. Okay, we just kind of went this way, but when you lived in that way, but now you must put them all away. Here we go. Another list. Anger, fury, malice, slander, and obscene language out of your mouths. I want to stop real quick here. You know what? I know so many people who swear and are Christians. And this used to be me. I don't have time to go into my slap them in the face. But a friend of mine said, boy, you profess to be this Christian and listen to you talk. And that was me telling jokes and me referencing some kind of sexual stuff and just being raunchy. And of course, my F-bombs, every other word, because that's how I spoke. And I thought I was cool. Let me go back to the readings. I'm trying to not say, (laughs) but I digress. (laughs) Stopping lying to one another. Since you have taken off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed for knowledge in the image of its creator. Again, you've got to spend time with God for him to renew you and for you to every single day take off the old self because we have to do that. We've got to humbly give it to God. If these graces have fallen into our life, we can't take them for granted. You never know when Satan will come back and when we are going to be tempted again to go in the other direction. You never know. This happens to all of us all the time. So again, every single day we can be renewed. And then we get into there's no Greek and circumcised and weird words. But anyway, Christ is all and in all. All right. I really sucked up a lot of time on that, but I am just kind of looking at this. Okay. We're not going to get into the gospel, but I think that kind of lays it out for us. We have to remember that we're called out of this world and it's pretty cool to be called out of this world. And the more that we are healed with the stuff that tempts us in this world and has a stronghold over us and you know, is that obsessive thought in our minds or the, uh, the oppression things that come at us in the other way. I don't know. I really don't know. Sorry, I'm going off on a quick tangent here. For those who are joining me from the event that I just did in San Angelo, Texas, I'm not sure if I got into oppression much, but we can be obsessed, meaning Satan has access to our 
thought, not our thoughts, sorry. That's exactly what they don't have access to. They have access to our memories and our emotions. So they can flip an emotion on us and they have access to our bodies, by the way. So they can flip an emotion on us or they can put a thought into our head that is a memory of something that we've experienced. And then all of a sudden the body reacts, right? If it's a sad thing, then the body, you know, gets the pit in the stomach and your heart aches and your soul aches. And you go back to that day that someone died or whatever happened that was this traumatic experience. Then, of course, if there's something that's abusive, your body goes into that fight or flight and protection mode. And all of these reactions that your body goes through from a past event is actually occurring right now. Your body has no idea that this isn't happening at this moment. That's why we call them those subconscious programs. That's why we also, when we relive and go through and repeat the cycle over and over and over again, we are killing ourselves slowly because those genes of sickness and illness are coming into the body and growing instead of the genes of growth and regeneration and autophagy that, you know, come in and they eat the old stuff that's on your body that also comes with diet. But I digress. There's two ways of how your body can go. You've got your genes from your parents, <clears throat> excuse me, that have been handed down generation after generation after generation. And then you have epidemiology, which is your lifestyle and how you choose to live. And this is fact, Jack. I mean, the way that you choose to live, the way that you choose to eat, the way that you choose to move your body, the way that you choose to pray, the way that you choose to reduce your stress, the way that you choose to take hold of your health and get off of the drugs and look at the actual main root cause of what all of the symptoms that the drugs are addressing is and address that and fix that, you're just going to be in pain and on this cycle of just living life to get through it until you die instead of loving every second, every moment, being energized, being fulfilled with God and wanting to love people and bring them to Jesus and have peace and joy and love all the time. I mean, this is, I think, the end game of what all of the secular world is seeking, right? They're seeking that peace and just satisfaction with our lives where we are right now, living in that 24-hour journey today. All right, this is getting long and I'm kind of going off on a tangent, but I want to go back to we're called out of this world. We really are. So let's ask God into our heart to help renew us and put our old self away. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Holy Father, we ask that you come into our lives in a big way. You've called us, you've, you've called us to your heart and we are reacting. We are trying desperately to be who you call us to be, but we need your help. We need your guidance. We need your grace. We need Mary. We need our guardian angel. We need the whole holy angel, all the saints in our lives so that we can fight this fight, so that we can see how evil attacks us and the patterns that we are falling into and that each day you can renew our bodies, our souls, our minds so that we can have knowledge and understanding and your wisdom so that we can live our lives resting on you, leaning on you, letting you and your will be done in our lives instead of ours. So today, as we do every day, we offer you our life. 
our thoughts, our words, our actions, help them be all Christ-like so we can imitate him. And we most importantly ask that you help us put our old self away. Far, far in the past, all of the habits, all of the things that you listed in the readings today, help us all put that in the past, especially idolizing other things other than you, Lord. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, sorry. Long one today, but incredible reading. And look, I was going to try to do that and the gospel. Holy moly, that would have been a super duper long one. All right. Really, renew yourself in God today. Take off your old self. Look, we can do this every single day. Just like an old dirty coat that you were working in the yard you were in the pig pen maybe you were out in the dog poop and it's just dirty and it's smelly and it's gross and you're done with it you're done with it you zip it down and you take it off every single day and that's your old self with your old poopy life (laughs) and your old poopy smells and your old poopy actions and your old poopy thoughts and then you can step into jesus and really i like to think about stepping putting him on don't get all weirded out like It's like disgusting. It's like, what is that? Um, Oh gosh, I could totally see the cover of the movie with the moth over the lips. And I know that you're all screaming in the phone, you know, ah, it's this movie, but it's the one with uh, Jodie Foster. And I don't know, the guy puts skin on the one that they're trying to find. He's a serial killer and he puts the people's skin on. I'm not saying that with Jesus. Silence of the lambs. I'm sure you're all like relieved over there. Oh my gosh, finally, she finally got it. (laughs) Silence of the lambs. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying putting on Jesus like it's light and not new age light, Jesus light, where we allow him to shine, not us. We're inside, you know, but it's really him that's coming out to everyone. And it's his heart and it's his love. I don't know. Maybe that's goofy. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) All right, everyone. I love you all. Find something more with God, soul, mind, and body, and have a blessed and inspired day.